right, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Today is a day I'm really not feeling it. Uh, I have been just drowning in work. The past week, week and a half or so, seven to 10 days have just been insanely busy. And you know, I, I hate to come on here and uh, complain about business going good and, and things going good, but um, I, I guess I'm not complaining about that. It's just that the workload uh, has been really high. Uh, lately and I have noticed um, as my work stress increases um, that that does to an extent like impact uh, what happens in the gym and I know that that may like confuse some people how you know the, the gym and work and those things are like two separate things so how can one impact the other but the you know fatigue and uh, nervous system fatigue and things like that is, is more than just physical. There, there is mental uh, stress and mental fatigue that is involved uh, in training as, as well as obviously the physical. And, and obviously when a, a heavy percentage of my mental energy, that, that's a good way to word it, a large percentage of my mental energy is being uh, focused on work right now, um, I, I just find that my desire to train kind of uh, goes down. Now, obviously, that that is not something that I listen to and I guess give into. You know, I, I obviously go and train, um, but I, I just, I guess, wanted to show that it is normal to an extent to have periods of time where you don't want to train. Now, if, if that is excessive and it extends for more than a couple workouts, like that is uh, usually a sign that a deload is on the horizon. And I, I may have a deload that's on the horizon here. It has been a while since I have deloaded. I've been on a very, very good run uh, of training and everything has been going exceptional. But um, obviously with um, the stress and everything that's kind of going on with work right now, uh, it, it may be a good time to do one. Uh, training performance has relatively been unaffected up until this point, and I don't foresee training performance to be affected today. Uh, and But if, if it is, I guess that's another piece of information that I could use. But I, I, I like I said, I don't really foresee that happening today. I, I know physically I feel fine and uh, I'm, you know, getting some caffeine and stuff like that. And then once I can get that in me and once I can get in the gym and get moving, uh, everything will be fine. Uh, so I, I know that physically I'm there to perform. You know, at least it feels that way as of uh, this moment in time. Uh, it's just mentally, I would rather be at home finishing off all the work that I have to do. Um, that that's just the truth uh, and the reality of it. Today has been one of those days where the messages just like don't stop coming through, which is just part of the job. You, you know what I mean? Like I've, uh, I, I know I mentioned this in one of my other videos and I've uploaded like a short uh, on TikTok and YouTube too, but kind of talking about how the day in, a, a day in the life of an online coach is very unpredictable. And, and, and today has been one of those days where there's just been a lot of people that have needed things and it's just like coincidentally all happening on the same day and coincidentally all happening while I have a lot of other work that I have to do too. So I, I've just kind of been a slave to the computer uh, for the past like seven to 10 days. And honestly, man, I'm a workaholic, like uh, especially this, th this is my business. You know what I mean? Like this is my baby in, in a way, you know, I don't, I don't want to get off on a side tangent about this, but if there is anybody who's watching this video who is self-employed, like you, you'd be able to attest to the fact that like your business is like your child in a way, like you, you're always thinking about it and you're, you're really kind of, uh, always working. And I'm a fucking workaholic, man, especially with my business. But I also am very aware when I've been working like overtime on the overtime, uh, and when I need to just kind of take some time and, and chill out from it. So um, I can and will chill out from the work once I get it finished, but I have to get it finished to get to that point. So it's just been work, 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 work. Um, obviously you gotta bust out this session here and then go home and we'll have more work that we've got to finish up. Uh, I actually just left the grocery store. I'm coming from the grocery store to the gym. Uh, today, I, I, I know for a fact that I'm not gonna wanna go get groceries after I finish this workout. So uh, I, I just went and got them before I went to the gym. 
All right, what's up, what's up, guys? It's been a while since I've done a voiceover on some training footage, and it's been a while since I've kind of made a video kind of talking about the programming, so I kind of figured that's what we would do today uh, is talk about some of the stuff that you're watching here. So what you're watching is the Star Trek Decline Press, and this has kind of been my main chest compound movement on this workout ever since my show ended. And I don't want to sound dramatic, guys, but this may be the best chest pressing machine that I have ever used in my entire life. I, I've used a couple of them that are really, really good. The Flex Leverage uh, Flat Press is really good. Uh, I'm a big fan of the both the Hammer Strength and the Life Fitness Incline Presses. Those are really good. This Star Trek uh, line includes a flat press that I think is pretty good, but if you really like the flat press you will love the decline press. The contraction on this thing is just, it's, it's literally wicked. I, I don't have any other way to describe it other than that. Uh, it feels really, really good on, on the joints. Uh, just the contraction is just literally indescribable. Um, something about the, the slight decline just makes the contraction so much better than what the flat press was. I, I've used the flat press many times uh, over the course of the past couple of years, and it's a good exercise to kind of go on a good run of strength with, but uh, after a while, my elbow and my wrist kind of start to bother me on it, so uh, th this just kind of seems to have alleviated that because of the slight decline position. Um, making some really good progress on this movement. You know, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what I started my post-show phase off with, but I'm up to the point where I'm getting close to doing three plates per side on this, which I'm pretty happy with, uh, especially considering that I'm still under 200 pounds, which is, you know, not relevant to a lot of people watching the video, but, um, you know, I spent, the, with the exception of my prep last year, um, I hadn't been below 200 pounds in a while, and pressing movements and just push movements in general, uh, I find are pretty heavily affected by my body weight. As my body weight goes up and down, my ability to perform on those goes up and down with it. So uh, to be able to be progressing like this on this lift and uh, be going uh, on as good of a run as I am strength-wise with it, as my body weight staying as relatively light as it is, has been pretty nice. Really, really happy to continue to progress this uh, as the off-season goes through. In standard warm-up procedure for me, if you guys were kind of paying attention to how I was warming up there, uh, my reps were decreasing as the weight was getting heavier. So the weight that you're seeing on here, I obviously knew this was going to be the weight that I was going to hit walking into the gym. So I kind of uh, plan my warm-ups ahead of time to be able to make even jumps uh, while still uh, maintaining perfect execution. So let me let me kind of like walk that through. I, I'm pretty sure that my working weight was somewhere around 250 pounds. So for whatever reason, when I hear 250 pounds, like 50 pound increments is what comes in my head. So I consider the the machine completely empty to be zero pounds. So my first warm up was 50 pounds, and then I went from 50 to 100, 100 to 150, 150 to 200, and then I worked on 250. And I, I don't know if there's any like science or anything behind that, but I do typically like to make my warm ups all relatively equal in terms of the weight. You know, I don't like to have one warm up that goes up by 90 pounds and then one that goes up by 20. Uh, I feel like that kind of throws me off. So I, I like to take my working weight and I like to kind of uh, figure out how many warm ups I'm going to do. And then I kind of like to figure out what weight increment I'm going to do those warm ups with. And then I kind of will work backwards from there. Uh, and then typically, as I said, as the weight goes up, the reps go down. So I don't have this written in front of me, but I'm pretty sure my first warm up was 50 for maybe five or six. And then as I jumped to 100, I probably hit like three or four reps. And then as I hit 150, it was probably two or three. And then on 200, uh, I believe was two reps, but sometimes it's just a single. So I, again, as the weight goes up, the reps come down. And you'll notice uh, on those warm up reps that my contraction quality is still uh, very high. So I, I don't really feel like I need to do sets of 10 or 15 or 20 to get a good warm up. I really feel like I can do maybe 10 solid reps in total, 10 total warm up reps across three, four, five. 
uh, you know, warm up sets in order to get the muscle and the joints ready to fire. And that's another advantage of sticking with the same movements week in and week out, week in and week out. You know, I, I've, like I said, I've been doing that decline press since the end of my show. So at this point, I can, I can get on that machine and I can do it literally with my eyes closed. I know that I put my pinky finger on the end of the knurling. I know that before I start the set, you, you'll you saw that I like shoot my hips out forward to get to the end of the seat. You know, you'll notice that I have exactly where I like to put my feet. All of those little intricate details you learn about exercises the more that you do them over and over and over again. Uh, and, and that is a big reason as to why uh, I like uh, to do the same movements week after week after week. And, and, and it's a very similar thought process for those of you guys who are familiar with traditional sports like baseball, football, basketball. Uh, like you're really just doing the same things over and over and over and over and over again. And, and you're just perfecting the little intricate details uh, of those. And I understand that there are times where we have to switch out movements and stuff like that in a program, but it, it really is going to be in your best interest to be able to stick with movements for a long period of time and be able to literally run them into the ground to the point where you you know all the tiny intricate details uh, about those machines. So uh, nice little side tangent there uh, about warm-ups and just efficiency in the gym in, t in general. You know, one of the things that I'm pretty sure I talk about in, in the post-workout uh, rant, so to say, on this video is... Uh, like how well this session flows from exercise to exercise. Uh, a lot of the, the way that I have this programmed is because I go from one exercise like straight to one that's right uh, next to it. And then uh, combined with the fact that I'm very efficient at all of these exercises here, from the time that I do my first warm-up set of my first exercise to the time that I do my last rep of my last exercise, guys, th this is a workout that has like 14 or 15 exercises in it and I'm doing this workout in less than an hour uh, and a lot of that has to come down to uh, just being super efficient with these movements and literally being able to hop on a movement and do 10 total warm-up reps or less and then be able to get straight into the working set and and the main reason why I can do that uh, is because I've been doing these movements for so long uh, that I am one with the machine you know I am fused with the the decline press and, and him and I are one obviously I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of fucking with you guys but in, in a way that's kind of true like uh, you, you do the same things over and over and over again you just l learn all the little intricate details of them and when you're constantly switching things in and out then you don't really give your yourself an opportunity to learn uh, those intricate details. So I like to call this training ADHD. Uh, you know, if, if you're somebody who likes to have their program changed very frequently because it kind of uh, keeps you motivated and stuff like that, I, I, I can understand the mentality uh, and the thought process behind that. But I think we need to be very honest with ourselves. And if we're trying to set things up in a way to do things as optimally as possible. I, you know, I really don't like the word optimal anymore because it's just been run into the ground. But if we're, if we're really trying to set things up to put ourselves in the best position to make the most progress possible, uh, I really am of the belief that we need to just do the same movements week after week after week after week uh, and just focus on getting a little bit better at them, uh, both in terms of execution, weight, reps, uh, etc. And I really do think that it's that simple at the end of the day. surprisingly very very good training session uh, just kind of like I said on the way in I knew today would be good <clears throat> it's just that you know I, I really didn't feel uh, like being there but thanks to my prep uh, that is definitely a situation uh, that I've been dealt with before I, I guess you could say I, I mentioned in I think it was the sleep video that my prep my prep really kind of taught me that I'm capable uh, of a lot of things physically that my mind tells me that I'm not capable of. And um, this is kind of another one of those things 
some days you really just gotta force yourself to do it because uh, discipline takes over and you just gotta get in and, and get it done. When I got to the gym today, I got talking to uh, one of the members of the staff about future competition plans. And that really kind of set the work off, work out off on a high note. You know, I've, um, w what I plan on doing is competing at the same show that I did last year <clears throat> in 2025 uh, with the goal of trying to win my class, uh, win my division. You know, I, I do plan on making the middleweights uh, again, and, and I want to win the middleweights and then get an opportunity to compete for the overall and just to kind of like, you know, I, I've, I've been thinking that since the show, but to be able to like say that out loud to somebody was kind of uh, the right way to start off the workout. You know, th there's something about like having a goal and having a plan like in your head. And then there's another, you know, feeling that you kind of get when you physically speak it out loud and tell it to somebody that that's what you're gonna do. And you know, it's almost like, making a contract with yourself or something like that. So uh, that really just kind of got me in the headspace that I needed to be in. In order to start the workout, man, I was fucking flying through today. Um, I really love the, the way that I have this workout like set up in terms of the programming and everything. I literally feel like I can just roll from one exercise to the next like very, very smooth. And I, I can finish the workout from start to finish in like an hour. Like, it, and, and <clears throat> that's with like 14 or 15 different exercises in this workout. I mean, a lot of the stuff I'm kind of doing in like a zigzag superset-ish type of uh, fashion, but to be able to kind of like go through that much work in that short period of time, like I, I really look forward to this workout because I know that it is gonna be uh, kind of a quick, get in, get it done, get out type of scenario. And I, I really like that. That's kind of one of the things that I like about this upper lower split in general is the upper lower split kind of has forced me to eliminate a lot of like just nonsense. Um, and if I even wanted to get more technical, I, I could probably make my workouts even more simplified than what they already were. I, I don't even have them as simplified as I could possibly get them particularly the upper body workouts, but um, the, the upper lower split has, has really just been allowing me to focus on basic shit and just repeat that at a, at a very, very high frequency. And I'm loving it. You know, I, I kind of got thinking the other day and, and the decision after my show to change my training split to an upper lower type of split has been an amazing decision. You know, it's, it's only been a couple of months <clears throat> and obviously there's still uh, you know, time for it to develop. Uh, and it is developing each week as, as I kind of learn how to program it better and change the programming and everything. But as far as where it is right now, I'm, I'm on just an amazing, amazing, amazing run of training uh, performance wise and, and things are going awesome. Um, after talking about how awesome things are, I am currently kind of dealing with some like knee or calf pain. Uh, at the moment, which I think has come from the fact that I've really been pushing the shit out of my uh, calf and uh, quad volume lately um, it, within my, my upper, or excuse me, my lower body sessions. I'm, I'm obviously really trying to improve my quads and uh, I found, I have found that my calves, I, dude, I can, I can do so much fucking work on my calves and they'll recover from it every time. The calves are just unbelievably resilient. So I've, I've literally just been pushing the envelope, like how many fucking sets of calves can I do in one workout? And uh, I think I've kind of, finally kind of found uh, my limit because my joints are kind of <laughs> screaming at me and they're kind of pissed off at me right now. So tomorrow uh, I have, you know, t tomorrow I'm going to hit lower B. Tomorrow is a leg day and it'll be pretty interesting to see how the leg day goes uh, with my knee and my calf uh, feeling how it feels right now. Um, I woke up the day after the leg day and it was sore as fuck. Oh my God, it was so sore. And then this morning I woke up and it, it was less sore, but it is still pretty tight. Um, I got on, before every workout, I ride the bike to warm up and um, 
as I was going on the bike and I started to get some blood in the knee and blood in the quads, everything started to feel pretty decent and it, it did not bother me at all um, during today's workout. Obviously it was an upper body workout. So realistically, how much does the knee contribute? But still, you know, there, there wasn't any like lingering pain or discomfort that was very apparent. So that that's a good sign. So depending on <clears throat> how I feel waking up tomorrow, uh, you know, that will kind of depend on uh, how tomorrow's leg workout goes. And then obviously depending on how it feels as I'm actually in the gym uh, and moving, but kind of uh, going back to what I said uh, on the way into the gym and then kind of looping that into what I just said about how good my training is going recently. You, typically I notice when I go on a really good run of training and I start making like really rapid logbook progressions, my body kind of gets irritated with me, you know what I mean? Like the, the muscles are adapting and are getting stronger very quickly, but the soft uh, tissue, tendons and stuff like that don't adapt that quickly. So it, at that point, I found that it has kind of become a game of like pushing and pulling with the volume and the rest and frequency and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, the I, I wish... Uh, a, a lot of times that you could just go on an amazing run of training and, and, and there's no negative repercussions from that. And, and it isn't always the case that you get some sort of uh, repercussions from it, but at least with my most recent like runs of training, I have kind of found that if I'm progressing the logbook very, very quickly, eventually the soft tissue and stuff kind of says, Hey, like, you know, we're, we're not recovering as quickly as your muscles are. We may need to slow down a little bit. So need to start being careful about that because the biggest thing that can derail an amazing run of training is an injury. And that would just be absolutely devastating right now. So just need to not be a meathead uh, and play that smart. Uh, some other good news about today's session is um, I have been consistently doing HIT cardio uh, after all of my upper body sessions for the last probably like three weeks. So the last like four, five or six uh, upper body workouts and it's it's been four rounds of 15 seconds on 45 seconds off of battle ropes and uh, I, it's true hit cardio I, I should film it sometimes like you guys should hear uh, how heavy I'm fucking breathing when I'm doing that stuff it is true hit cardio I am really pushing my heart rate like as physically high as I can get it um, and I noticed today that that is getting noticeably easier. Like I, I'm noticing it getting a lot uh, easier and stuff. So that is good news. Um, so what I have considered doing uh, is like potentially progressively overloading that in some way. And I, you know, I, I don't want to actually call it progressively overloading, but, but basically making that harder. So I have two options there. Right now I'm doing four rounds of 15 seconds on, 45 seconds of rest. So I could keep it at four rounds and I could just increase the work time, decrease the rest time. So I could change it uh, to four rounds of 20 seconds on and 40 seconds of rest. Or I could add in a fifth round of 15 seconds on uh, and 45 seconds of rest. Very similar to training, you can either increase the volume, aka do more sets, so going from four rounds to five, or you could increase the intensity of the volume you're currently doing. So staying at four rounds and just increasing the work time from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Um, and, and my goal isn't necessarily to try and see how high I can get that, but I do want to establish a really good baseline of aerobic fitness because another thing that I noticed today, kind of going back to what I uh, said about how quickly I can get this workout done, part of that is because of the way that I have the exercises structured and, and it kind of flows uh, quickly. But another part of that is, and, and the hope and the thought process with that is through the hit cardio and through increasing my um, aerobic capacity and, and, and breathing capacity, I can decrease my rest times in the gym and I can increase <clears throat> the training density of each workout. So not only be uh, progressively overloading my lifts, but getting the workouts done in a quicker period of time. Uh, and, and, and that really has been a big focus for me, like, especially as of late with this upper lower split, because 
again, echoing what are, and kind of circling back to what I said about the upper lower split and how awesome it is because it forces me to eliminate the fluff. When you're doing a program that has no fluff in it, the program is hard as fuck uh, because there is, there is no like easy exercises, so to say, because there's no fluff. Like you're, you're focusing on uh, all of the hard shit basically because you're trying to get the most bang for your buck. And so because of that, the sessions are pretty demanding and I, I'm noticing as of late that my recovery is starting to get impacted. So uh, I, I'm really trying to get the workouts done in the, in the shortest amount of time so that I can go home and I can start the recovery process. This is like a very meathead level way of thinking but we all we all know that we're not growing in the gym like in the gym is where we're tearing down the muscles and and we all know that we're we're growing when we're outside of the gym so by default and by definition of that the longer that we are spending in the gym the longer that we are spending not growing and the more time that we spend out of the gym, the more time that we are spending growing. And, and, and it's probably not like that linear, like, you know, that direct one-to-one, -one, but again, meathead level way of thinking that makes a lot of fucking sense to me. So I'm, I'm really trying to get in, get the basics done and, and just get the work that I need to get done and then go home and start the recovery process because uh, th this program is kicking the shit out of me in the best way possible, but it, it's kicking my ass. Uh, and, and I'm very happy uh, with how it's been going and excited to see how it continues to progress. But I need to be careful about how I'm kind of maneuvering my way through it. Because if I don't maneuver my way through it uh, appropriately, it's going to bury me. And I'm going to have to like maybe switch to a different program or could potentially get injured or, or something like that. So uh, again, you know, getting into that point where it, it's about pushing and pulling and knowing when to do both. So kind of just focused on taking things on a day by day basis. And, and part of the things that helps me do that is making these videos. You know, I feel like uh, I'm really just kind of like laying out my thoughts and feelings for each training session on the day and just being very upfront with you guys with, with how I'm feeling, but also part of me telling you guys how I'm feeling like allows me to kind of, um, externalize or like put the thoughts that are in my head out there, which allows me to be able to make smarter decisions about what I'm doing. So, um, you know, ho hopefully you guys are uh, getting some benefit and learning something out of these videos. But at the same time, I'm almost kind of selfishly doing them for myself because uh, I feel like it makes me a better um, trainer and not not a trainer like as in like coaching people but like a trainee like you know athlete in the gym like it, it, I feel like it makes me better at that so thanks for helping me out and I hope that I'm helping you guys uh, out in return absolutely perfect timing as I pull into the parking lot I could not have timed that better if I wanted to uh, I'm gonna wrap this one up and go in and eat and finish uh, a lot of client work which I know that I was bitching about in, in the beginning, but at the end of the day, I, I am very like happy and blessed to, to be this busy. Especially when you're self-employed, man, you'd, you'd rather be busy than not be busy. So uh, things are really good. I just, I gotta bust out, uh, bust out some of this work so that I can get like the monkey off my back. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people where like, I freak the fuck out until I can get my to-do list done. I just am like desperately trying to get it done as quickly as I can so that I can have that relief of, of having the work done. So I just need to crank it out and, and finish the week off strong. Lower B tomorrow. Uh, I plan on taking you guys with me because it will be interesting to kind of see how I maneuver uh, through that one, to be honest. So uh, I'll bring you guys with me. It could be a good day. It could be a horrible day, but we're going to find out either way. So I'm going to go in and take a shower and eat and finish off this work. Uh, thanks for tagging along with me today, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, as always, any questions or anything, in the, leave them in the comments. Um, coaching services and stuff are in the description. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good uh, rest of your day. And as always, take care of yourselves. Oh. Uh.